Hi, this is TJ and I'm here to talk about Neo4j 4.4, one of the latest editions and versions of Neo4j server. Okay, so today we're going to talk about two features, call-in transactions and cloud native API, HTTP V. Ready to go? Okay, so first thing first, what we have to do here is we have to download Neo4j 4.4. Once you click on this link, what it should do is it should take you to our download center. Okay, the download center gives you options to download our enterprise server, uh, you know, community server, uh, Neo4j desktop. For today's, uh, you know, demo, basically what I need here is a Neo4j uh, desktop. Okay, I'll tell you why. So once you click on this link here, uh, basically what it should do for you is to kind of take you to this particular link once you click on that, which basically says experience Neo4j on your desktop. It's free, get started today. Uh, basically why is, is because of the fact that it comes with a Neo4j enterprise server with a developer license, right? So you can try all the enterprise features in non-production environment with a developer license, simple. So once you download and you go through the process of installation, what you will end up seeing is something like this. This is Neo4j desktop, okay? You have a primer project. Within the primer project, you can have different versions and iterations. I have older versions, but I also do have 4.4, okay? That's what I need for today's demo, right? For call-in transactions and uh, Cloud Native API, because uh, they are dependent on this particular version. They are the new, new features for this particular uh, version release. Okay, now that we are here, the second thing we will do is when you click on this or you know uh, open you can open up neo4j browser which we need for running our cipher queries it's the cipher query interface as most of you may know who's already working with graph databases others who don't know basically this is like a query playground where you actually query the database so once you click on neo4j browser uh, eventually it should open up another window with as, as you can see it has its own local host and everything else and then what i was doing here is kind of resetting the demo so basically i deleted all the relationships and nodes but what i'm going to do is i'm going to go and recreate that right so for call in transactions i'm going to use uh the method uh of you know calling a transaction within a transaction to show you how easily we can not only insert the records we can control how many records we insert and how many times we're calling the transactions within it just go back to this particular page and read a little bit more about it and just the value prop you know what we're trying to do here is you know with the cipher clause uh, it's it's basically going to provide a massive gain in data processing while while reducing your memory requirements when importing very large data sets okay we've taken a sm smaller sample no doubts for today's demo but it's just basically going to be uh, making your life super easy right and and the idea is when you are doing a transaction within a transaction um, and as this transaction executes and and sets of results are computed new transactions can be started using the results from the first operation so you know basically it's sort of a chain right um that how that's how powerful this feature is so for me uh, i'm gonna go come here and copy this as is so that i can show you the code works on the page um and then come here and then just pretty much uh paste it so what we're doing here is we are loading it from a csv uh file some data uh which kind of uh has world cities information right so that's where it's stored So let's go and execute. I should quickly just, you know, populate this data set, uh, pull the information from the CSV file and dump it into a graph database, right? So um, for us to kind of quickly look what that uh, would, would look like, so I can just start, you know, writing the query um, and just, uh, sorry, my bad. And I'm just gonna say return star, just, uh, to see what this comes out to be, right? So that's pretty much everything I have here, right? So I'm just saying, you know, match all and everything and then kind of return everything back in, uh, from this query. So as you could see, I can actually reduce the size and show you the whole feeling of what this entire graph database looks like. It's pretty fun, right? Um, Cool. So, and then you can actually build some of these stuff here in terms of, you know, your relationship types to understand and go deeper. Cool. Now, once this is done, that was the first set of the demo. The second piece of the demo, we're going to use the same data set, but we wouldn't be using browser. I want to show you how Cloud Native API really works. So Cloud Native API or HTTP V2, let's go back to this guy. 
what it really does for you is you just don't know or don't uh, need any more um, a middleware or a language driver to communicate between your application and your Forge server, right? Simple, very, very simple, but it was extremely important for us to have using, you know, a, basically a server-side routing. And it simplifies the developer experience uh, in the cloud and helps accelerate application development uh, because you don't anymore have to understand Bolt protocol or routing tables and beyond, right? To Postman, create a new request uh, as, and just, you know, have it as a post, certainly, which I have. What I'm doing here is I'm just using this as uh, the connection string because that's where my local host uh, or my server is running right on that particular port uh, and then authorization I'm just going to go change this to basic auth and uh, this part is taken care of we just need to kind of now go to the body and change it to look nice and neat with the JSON and I'm just going to go and now pull up a cyber query right so exactly what I said that we won't be using any language driver, any moderators, nothing in between, just the uh, API call back into the system to get you the information you need, right? So uh, let's go ahead and do that. I think we are good here. And I guess, uh, let me explain the query though while I'm here. So what we're doing here is we're kind of matching um, information of a specific city, um, certain countries where the city population is not null. And it's basically going to return the country name, city name, city location, city population, and it'll order it by the city population descending and limited by three. Pretty simple query uh, from a Cypher perspective. We're good to go. When I run this, that's pretty much it. Super simple. And we got our results in no time, which is awesome. But we also got the, the information we needed. So that's pretty much it, you know, and then um, those are two features for today. I'll, I'll talk more about the other features and show you a demo of it. Uh, but uh, for now, uh, listen to this video for the rest of the features. And I hope you liked this demo and you would try Neo4j 4.4. Until then, we'll, we'll talk soon. Neo4j Graph Database empowers developers by providing them with full control over how their applications interact with the database, including robust data pipelines, machine learning and AI, streaming data from sources like Kafka, and more. Neo4j's high-performance distributed cluster architecture scales with your data and your business needs in real-world situations. With Neo4j 4.4, the latest version release of Neo4j Graph Database comes with significant feature additions. This new Cypher clause provides a massive gain in data processing and reduces memory requirements when importing very large data sets by enabling developers to start one or more transactions from within a transaction. Connect to Neo4j using Cloud Native API and simplified routing without middleware or use of language drivers. Scale, swap, and upgrade graph applications without any downtime with remote database and database alias commands. Achieve significantly faster text-based matches and benefit from data import and runtime queries. Take advantage of cutting-edge Apple Silicon using Docker images with official support for ARM. Users can now authenticate with cloud-based identity providers. With Neo4j, you can achieve a robust transactional guarantee, high performance across trillions of relationships, and millions of hops per second. Run Neo4j anywhere supporting your hybrid private cloud, lift and shift, or cloud native environment needs. To learn more about the other rich features added to Neo4j 4.4, log on to neo4j.com slash what's new 4.4.